30. Pure religion and undefiled. The origin of the word define is in the Latin definere, to limit, to set a boundary, an end. Definitions thus establish boundaries to words and things. Language would be impossible if there were no limits on the meanings of words. Definitions are propositional truths. They set forth the boundaries of meanings for words and things. The concept of definition is a religious one. How we establish limits and boundaries depends on our religious presuppositions. Thus, the artist Marcel Duchamp, militantly against Christian faith and morality, was also against meaning. Quote, his work was meant for none but himself, and he took every precaution to see that nothing of it should be intelligible to an outsider. End quote. He believed that, quote, the concept of judgment should be abolished. End quote. For years, quote, the creation of a new language was to be one of his principal preoccupations. End quote. The task was, of course, an impossible one. How could a new language avoid meaning? The definition of a word is a delimitization, an act of judgment. He was afraid of beauty in art or in life because the idea of beauty involves a judgment, an act of definition. He was against boundaries or definitions in life as in art. This same impotence to destroy definitions is common to the modern and so-called postmodern mind. To define is to discriminate and discrimination is held to be invariably bad. As a result, many hold homosexuality to be acceptable because it is a denial of moral values or definitions, and godly heterosexuality to be bad because it sees moral boundaries everywhere. One form of attack on definitions is to redefine words by breaking down some aspects of meaning to extend the boundaries this is a form of redefinition into obliteration. This process of altering boundaries has taken place within Christianity. The term, quote, Christian, end quote, has been so vaguely defined that its meaning now can include those who deny every doctrine of the biblical faith. The same is true of Christian charity. Bernard Smith has called attention to the new meanings given to the term they include political action and armed revolution. It is held to be giving, quote, power to the powerless, political action to change a country's constitution, aid to terrorist groups, and so on, end quote. In the course of such a redefinition, both Christian and charity are redefined. According to James 1.27, quote, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspoiled from the world. End quote. The previous verse in the Greek text ends with the word religion, threskeia, in verse 26, true religion and the false are contrasted, and false religion is marked by an unbridled tongue, among other things. But what is, quote, pure religion and undefiled, end quote. The modern attitude isolates texts from the context of the whole revelation of God, of which James was familiar. We thus cannot honestly limit this definition of religion to visiting orphans and widows in their affliction. The whole range of charitable activities required by God's law are in mind. Similarly, we cannot honestly believe in revelation and isolate the meaning of pure religion to caring for widows and orphans. All of biblical theology is presupposed. These words are written to church members who profess to be true believers. They lived close to the resurrection and the full splendour of that mighty event was close and real to them. The statement concludes with the words that one must, quote, keep himself unspoiled from the world, end quote, Pure religion thus involves all the theological and moral premises of the faith and their outcome in helping make the needs of those whom God sees as test cases of our faithfulness. Therefore, we have dealt with humanistic redefinitions of the faith. 
Such revisionism exists also in evangelical and reformed church circles as well. It is not uncommon for such persons to bridle at James 127 and to accuse those who use it of advocating legalism or a works religion. This, again, is a misuse of Scripture because it isolates a text from the total context of the Bible. Charity is an important part of the law, the prophets, the Psalms, the Gospels and the Epistles. It is, in fact, a distinguishing aspect of Christian faith. Our Lord is very emphatic in declaring, quote, By their fruits ye shall know them, Matthew 7.20. James, in the verses which immediately follow, James 1.27, cites, quote, Respect of persons, end quote, as at least evidence of evil and blasphemy, James 2.1-10. Then he makes very clear that our actions do test our faith, James 2.11-26. The devils in hell know that there is a God, and they tremble, but they are not saved by their knowledge of that fact, James 2.19. Quote, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. James 2.26 James then goes on to cite sins of the tongue, of speech, as an evidence of poor faith. James 3.1-18 Too many churchmen have assumed that, because the state has a welfare program, they are absolved from the need to do anything in the sphere it is strange that the early church, living within the Roman Empire, with its very comprehensive welfare system, which included housing and entertainment, bread and circuses, did not say that the biblical mandate for charity could be disregarded. Instead, they began, although they were few in number, a major movement headed by deacons to meet human needs, beginning in their own circles. They obviously did not see, as against our modern churchmen, state as welfare as pleasing to God. Something is seriously wrong when churchmen see Christian charity as a deformation rather than a reformation. It's heartening to see some local churches returning to the biblical mandate concerning pure religion. Christianity is more than a faith. It is the kingdom of God, ruled by a king, Jesus Christ, it has a law given by God. It has a government, of which all believers are members, citizens and servants. It requires us to occupy all things until he comes. To restrict the scope of the kingdom to the inner life is to reduce it to a pagan mystery religion. To curtail the relevancy of the whole law word of God to salvation is to undermine the meaning of salvation. Christian charity is a necessary step towards the restoration of Christianity.